Hello, and welcome to the CHA Extracurricular Podcast. Today is Tuesday, October 4th, and I'm your host, Chris Keller, and I'm excited to have Grace Altus, our development coordinator, in the studio today. Grace, welcome to the show. Good morning, Chris. It's good to be here. It's awesome to have you. Thank you for joining us. We've got an awesome topic to talk about, and I'm so glad you're able to come by. And uh, we're going to be talking about the Heritage Project, which is coming up very soon, October 14th. So that'll be our topic of the show. But before we get there, a few sports updates and, and other school updates as well. Uh, How about those volleyball teams? They are just both doing a great job this year. The middle school volleyball girls, 10 and 1, they are just an incredible, unbelievable record this year. And the varsity volleyball girls, they're no slouch either at 9 and 4. Great job, ladies. Keep it up. The cross-country team also doing a great job this year. I know we've had a lot of folks... Uh, coming in some top positions and putting up great times. So uh, just excited that the sports program here is really flourishing and doing well. I believe there's actually a state cross-country meet coming up in a couple of weeks. All right. Excellent. Well, we'll be uh, excited to cheer those folks on for that. Looking forward to that. This week also is Spiritual Emphasis Week. That'll be starting tomorrow, and Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday we will have chapel each of those days. Looking forward to it. I know Pastor Jeremy has put a lot of time uh, and preparation into that, and I'm just excited to see how God will move through that this week. Uh, And of course, I'm excited for the music. The praise team, Ignite, has been uh, working up some music, and we're excited to have some Uh, solos and some guests, and it's just going to be a great time. So very excited for that. On your athletic calendar, tonight, the middle school and varsity volleyball team, they're going to be playing RVCS, and that will be here at 5 and 6 o'clock. Wednesday, cross country, they have a scrimmage at BFMS, and that starts at 430 Thursday. Thursday. Oh, yeah. We've got the eSports match for both the middle school and varsity teams. Those matches are at 4 and 5 o'clock. And also Thursday, there's a middle school and varsity volleyball match against King's Christian Academy here at 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock. So Thursday, that's your big night. Come on out and enjoy. And I, I don't know if I can believe this, but there's an empty box on my Friday, so that's just unheard of. So maybe those athletes can get some rest then, and those families can enjoy some time together. Well, Grace, I'm so excited to have you here. And uh, the way I love starting out interviews with folks is just to ask some questions about uh, your introduction to CHA. Uh, it's just a chance for me to ask that question that maybe never came up uh, in conversations because we just couldn't find the time to to talk about that. And, and I just love hearing that. Some of that is uh, the history nerd in me. I love knowing the context of people's lives, uh, where they've come from, and how they've gotten to where they are. So would you share a little bit about uh, how you came to find out about CHA and then eventually uh, came to be here? Sure. Well, uh, I found out about Christian Heritage uh, because I grew up here. So it was always sort of a staple in the background um, of growing up. I didn't get to come here, but uh, I did know people throughout the years that came here and, you know, either transferred to or from uh, CHA over time that I went to school with. Um, Back in the day, in my high school days, I did come to a couple of basketball games here. It was much smaller then. Uh, So the stands weren't quite as full, uh, but always a great crowd, and uh, everybody was super pumped and, you know, cheering on their their nights uh, from the sidelines. So I kind of knew about it the whole time. Um, And as far as what brought me here now, um, when our daughter was, our youngest daughter was a baby, um, our other kids did go to public school. Um, and they did well there. But Abby was always very different. She likes uh, small, uh, individualized attention and, and class sizes and things. And so we homeschooled her all through elementary school. 
and we prayed and we prayed and you know we said well what are we going to do when she gets to middle school I said I am not prepared to teach her at the middle school level um so we prayed that God would open a door um that she would be able to come when she got to middle school age so um Right before she started sixth grade last summer, uh, he opened that door in the form of development coordinator, um, which is right in my wheelhouse. Uh, Fundraising and event planning and all of that stuff is something that I've always had a passion for. Um, And so now I get to do it as my job, which is even better. Um, So God just really opened that door for us and made, made that possible for us. That is so awesome. And, and I have to say, I'm uh, so excited uh, for multiple reasons. First off, uh, you know, just grateful to have you here as that development coordinator. Uh, but also this year, it's been great to have Abby in class. And I've been, uh, she's in my English class and in a study hall, and she's just been an awesome addition to the school. Uh, I know she was here last year, but I didn't really have that chance to interact as much. So it has just been a pleasure to have her as a student. So uh, I'm glad you're here, too. Well, and I will say that, uh, and I think I told you on orientation night when Abby found out that you were going to be her teacher, not only in one period, but two, she was very excited because uh, all of last year, uh, just seeing the senior class that you had and, you know, you were their camp advisor and different things. And so that was her first experience at CHA. And so she was like, I cannot believe I get Mr. Keller. She was so excited. <laughs> well, I'm flattered. Thank you so much. Uh, it is it is really an honor getting to be that senior camp advisor. It's such a um, an opportunity to have that kind of kind of that last touch before those students head out into the world. So I'm still feeling my way around in that, but definitely love that and and look forward to, uh, there might be some tears in the future, but when Abby gets to that point too, uh, hopefully I'll really have it figured out by then. That'll be great. Hopefully time slows down a little bit before we get there. (laughs) Yes. Yes. (laughs) She is our baby. She is our baby. (laughs) Well, uh, as you mentioned, you do such a great job of organizing these different um, events that we have, or I'm saying that. I know you do a great job of that. You didn't necessarily put it that way. Um, you're too humble for that. But uh, let's talk about the Heritage Project. Um, let's just start with the basics. Um, I, I don't know what sort of uh, understanding our folks out here have of the Heritage Project. So if you were going to kind of give us your elevator pitch uh, for what that is, uh, go ahead and share that with us. So the Heritage Project, first and foremost, is my favorite day of the entire year. Um, it is incredible. And at the bare bones, it's a service project. So it is cultivating a spirit of service in our students. So they start in K-3 and they have different projects all the way up until they graduate. Um, COVID put a little bit of a damper on it a couple of years ago, but we are back in full swing. This year, I think we have 15 different organizations that we're working with in some capacity. That's awesome. And it uh, impacts people literally all around the world. So it is an incredible day of service. And all of our students get involved, all volunteers, all the same day. So it's pretty incredible. That is. And I know that really is uh, the, why we do that, right, mm-hmm. is to give these students an opportunity to serve. But but do you want to speak more to that in, in any way? Or um, don't let me keep rambling, I guess. No. So second, it is our fundraiser, uh, the biggest fundraiser that we have all year. It accounts for over for 50% of our fundraising uh, income for the year. So the way that we handle that is our families receive a packet of letters and they address them and sign them to request sponsorship for the community service hours. And so as a school, we contribute over a thousand hours of community service that day. So those sponsors are donating in honor of that, but they are supporting the school uh, to bridge that gap in annual fundraising and annual budget needs Um, And mainly tuition assistance um, is what it comes down to. So have to pay the bills with that tuition. And so the tuition assistance is so um, incredibly important for many of our families. Uh, So it helps to provide that. Yes, and we're excited to be able to have such excellent students here and to be able to to help them be here. That's just awesome. Yes, and I will say our donors and our support people in the community 
come and show out every single time. They are incredible supporters. And I know they do that because God lays it on their heart to support Christian education uh, because we are not state funded. Uh, So we don't get, um, we don't have that luxury. So it's very, very nice to have that kind of support. Definitely. And and all of our students are involved. Is that correct? Yes. All 345 of them. So K3 through 12. All right. All on the same day. Good. I'm glad to hear Waylon gets to jump in there and be involved too. Let's get him oh, started yes. early on That's this. That's right. Very good. Well, why don't we talk a little bit about some of the, you, I think you mentioned 15 different uh, organizations that we're involved with uh, that we send volunteers to go help. Uh, why don't you pick a few that we can chat about? So, well, since you mentioned Waylon, I'll start there. Uh, our K3 are actually doing a project that I have dubbed the Red Bag Project. All and right. so they're packing bags uh, with blankets and hot cocoa and um, different items to take to the Ronald McDonald House in Roanoke, Virginia. So um, the Ronald McDonald House serves families that have children in the hospital um, that have major procedures or maybe their babies are in the NICU. Um, so these families are going through a really tough time. Um, and so just to be able to give them a, a notebook to write down notes that the doctor says, you know, they might not have thought about that when they ran out of the house. So to be able to give them those, it's just a way of loving on them. Um, We'll go to the opposite end of the spectrum and speak about the the twelfth graders. The eleventh and twelfth graders go to Feeding America. Yes, that's right. I, I love getting to help that organization out. Um, I've been there, well, two times last year. I'm trying to remember if I went prior to that as well. I may have, but it was uh, just an awesome trip. Uh, a great group to work with. They're so well organized, and I know they reach out to such a large. Uh, region and a large group of people. I won't try to make up the stats. I remember them sharing them, and it was incredible just uh, how many people they're able to help. And for us to be able to jump in there and to pack food boxes um, that can be donated to folks who need that, uh, it was just really uh, meaningful. But also the people who worked there were just joyful. They were excited about their their, um, what they were doing, what they were volunteering for. And I know the second time we went back, we were really uh, impacted by one of the gentlemen working there. And the seniors talked about him for the remainder of the year, and he was just so uh, excited to have us there and encouraging and uh, you know speaking to them about life and about God. And it was just excellent for them to kind of get that in a real-world situation, uh, to be able to experience that and to... to, to feel community Mm -hmm. um, outside of our own community, which I think is important for us to be able to engage that way too. So that was awesome. Feeding America, Feeding Southwest Virginia, that was a great group. Randy Holden uh, is our contact there, and he, I can feel his energy through his emails. Uh, He is just contagious. Um, But Feeding America and Feeding Southwest Virginia actually pack boxes that come to Rocky Mount, Virginia. So they impact our other organizations that we work with. So Stepping Stones Missions, which we yeah. bake goods for. Um, God's Provision Food Pantry, they pick up deliveries from them as well. And all of that comes full circle. So it's so nice to see. And if we if we don't teach our kids how to serve their community, who's going to do it? So yeah. we can't expect them to if we never teach them that's, how. That's exactly right. And I'm so glad you mentioned uh, Stepping Stone. That reminded me of a trip a few years ago, uh, I took some students there for the Heritage Project. Mm-hmm. And this is the other kind of element, folks, is you get to see these students in an atmosphere doing things that maybe <laughs> they don't ever do or haven't done much. So I remember we were kind of wrapping up there, and there was one particular uh, gentleman, one of our students, who got to mop the floor. <laughs> and uh, it was obvious that he had not held a mop <laughs> Maybe ever. I don't know. But um, so it was a little comical, but, you know, it was really cool to see these students learn a new skill, Mm -hmm. um, try something different. I know at another place we went, there were actually some power tools involved, and we built some shelving to store uh, food pantry items. And so it's just an awesome opportunity for these kids to learn what service is and learn some new skills, and and they're having fun with each other, too. It is. And, you know, for our family, we are very mission-minded. And so we say that we go to a mission-minded church. But I think it's important for our community and our teenagers 
to know, the next generation to know that the mission field isn't always overseas. It's not necessarily another country. And we do that, but it's it's your own backyard. That yeah. is your mission field. And um, just, so just that they understand that you can spread God's word anywhere you go. You don't have to go on a week-long mission trip. It can be uh, a few hours on a Friday with your school group. That's uh, exactly and right. And that's the mission field. That is. You know, I think that's just so perfect. We're just going to go ahead and uh, wrap up after that, and we're so excited for these kids to learn that the mission field is in their backyard and to be able to help so many awesome organizations. Well, thank you all for being here and listening to this episode of the Extracurricular Podcast. I hope you all enjoyed it. I know I had a great time getting to talk to Grace. Thank you so much for being willing to come and talk with us today. Uh, I'm looking forward to the Heritage Project, and I know it's going to be an incredible day. And Grace, I look forward to having you back on the podcast again in the future. Anytime. It was so much fun. Thank you. Uh, Awesome. Thank you. And folks, remember, you can find the podcast on YouTube. Be sure to like and subscribe. You can also listen and follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. With that, may we be united by faith. Go night.